Hey, welcome to Talking Hawks. How are you, boys? Oh, I'm fantastic. Great to be here. Awesome. Great to be yeah, here, thank- Spot. Got Spider Everett. So, um, mate, we've got a big show tonight. Uh, looking forward to going down memory lane with you. And uh, oh. a few things have been happening. Uh, yeah, now, you're stuck up on the Gold Coast, aren't you, Spider? No, 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 no. no. Not just the ordinary <laughs> Gold Coast. We're, we are at the home of football. We're at the hub at the moment. This is where oh, the yeah. grand final is going to play. Uh, we've got the Brownlow medal coming up as well. We're going to have the street parade. This is where it's all <laughs> happening. If, if it wasn't for the Gold Coast, we wouldn't have AFL. So we've got so many <laughs> clubs point. being here at the moment. So it's fantastic to have them on board. And you know what? you know what it actually sets up for the AFL is the fact that you know, the NRL, and because if you you, you live in the southern uh, north, northern states and a lot of people in Victoria don't know much about NRL, but they have a magic round where every NRL team goes to Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane for one round. Now, wow. if the AFL don't take this on board in the next year, 2021, 2022, and have one weekend where every game is played at Metricon Stadium or the Gabba, in the middle of June or July, when we had 27 degrees here yesterday, that's right, 27 yep. degrees, um, they're absolutely mad. So, yeah, that's where we're coming from. <laughs> I love that's the awesome. concept. That sounds great, mate. You yeah, sound like so, a great advocate for it. <laughs> so, Spider, what do, you, what do you think the chances are of the premiership being, uh, being the grand final being played up in your neck of the woods? Oh, look, to be honest with you, I think – Look, I'd love, I, I, I reckon Queensland deserve it. I reckon, you know, no doubt the AFL couldn't have gone ahead, couldn't have gone ahead with the way they've been able to implement so many great uh, things here in South East Queensland. You know, the Gabba and Metricon and just the way, and, you know, I drive past uh, Metricon every day and you just see the buses of players going in there. The You know, just if, if anyone doesn't know what goes behind the scenes to get these teams on the field each and every week. You've got to think of doctors in these hubs that are testing the players twice a week. You've got the wives or the girlfriends. You've got the kids in a hub that, you know, if you've got one runny nose, then suddenly it's all panic. So, look, I I, I totally believe Queensland deserve it. But I think as an AFL lover, I would love to see it at Optus Oval or Optus Stadium there in WA. Have a Saturday night yeah. grand final. They've always wanted to test a Saturday night grand final. This year's yep. been about the ifs and buts. Let's, t- let's test a Saturday night grand final at one of the best, newest stadiums in the country at a place that absolutely adores and loves football. And I, I think it would be an unbelievable spectacle. But so I'm, 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 I'm with you there, the Spyro. I'm with you there on that one, but I think the uh, WA Premier just shut that down. Really? Yeah, I think he's a stipulation on their stage two uh, restrictions. Or maybe, maybe they, maybe they can do it, but maybe not at capacity. Well, and what I, I'd want to see capacity. Yeah. Well, obviously, then uh, he doesn't want to be voted in next election. <laughs> <laughs> That's straight up. Yeah, yeah, that you're is right. straight up why he would. He would not have done it. if he wanted to be voted in next time. He would have said. We're making it happen. Exactly. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Well, if, you, if you've just joined us tonight, we've got Spider Everett on um, with us, and uh, it's great to have you here, Spider. So now um, Spider reckons that the, the grand final should be played at um, in Perth at Optus, Optus Stadium. And um, But, I, mate, I'm a fan of seeing it in Brisbane. I think they help save the game, uh, and I think they deserve it. So, it, look, if you agree with Spider, um, hit, the, hit the love heart for us. If you agree with me, hit the like button. Uh, on that, and we'll see. Um, we'll see what the fans say. The viewers um, have to say but about that and where they think you, it should uh, be. 
you got to understand, Brad, that, that 60 kilometres between the Gold Coast and Brisbane, if you live on the Gold Coast, you don't like Brisbane because Brisbane just come <laughs> down and enjoy our beaches and they live. What are the, what's in Brisbane? Nothing but nothing. a big block, nothing but a big dirty a mud flat. In the of it. That's it. Nothing exactly. That's right. it. <laughs> yeah, who, it's just who, a big old brown who, mud flat, mate. Whoever said, look, it's kids, we're going to Brisbane for the holidays. No one ever. No, no one got excited about that. No, <laughs> mate. I I used to live in your neck of the woods and I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. So it's uh yeah look uh I I'd still love to see it in, um up in your neck of the woods whether it's uh yeah. at Metricon or at um the Gabba but the Gabba can obviously hold more so now Spider what have you been up to um these days so since you left football uh um well normally yeah I do a travel TV show so I travel around Australia and uh, in New Zealand I've got to do that because my wife's a Kiwi so. Uh, we add in the New Zealand little bits, but yeah, mainly just traveling around and, and filming parts of Australia. So, you know, people, and it's a perfect time, unfortunately, with COVID, you know, you can't go overseas, but, you know, so many people haven't seen some of these great places around Australia. So I've been trying to promote that for, you know, last nine, 10 years and been on television for that long doing it. And unfortunately, over the last, you know, probably four months, we haven't been able to travel to extensively like we've been able to. So, like everybody else in the country, I've been doing a house renovation. So <laughs> <laughs> I have got absolute crap from here to breakfast. To, yeah, we're living in a halfway house at the moment. It's just everything everywhere, but loving it. And outside of that, I do breakfast radio here on the Gold Coast. So fortunate enough to be um, associated with the Triple M Network. So, yeah, it's been plenty happening. Fantastic. So what's going on? Why did you get on the tools, or uh, you just uh, or cons- you just pointing the fingers and uh, getting the uh, Renaults done? No, no, no. I've got a I've got a builder, but I get on the tools. I make sure I do. I'm learning as I go along, so I'll get him to show me what to do. So I've done you know a little bit of tiling and uh, just jumped on board, and now we're just about to hang some plaster over the next few days, and you know just knowing just you know digging trenches for concrete and uh yeah, yeah like it's a it's it's a renovation like anything else it's just kind of expanded 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 but uh it will be will, will be on television uh later on in september fantastic, fantastic. Do you want to read that one out there uh, brad do you want to put that back up the one from uh, yeah now yeah so janelle marshall said hey i made the spider um that was on the two, 250th game banner it's at the hawks museum now oh good to know that? spider it's- it yeah, is that's always awesome. good. And, and look, we really, you know, as a player, um, you know, there's moments in football that you absolutely love. And, you know, if it's running out onto the MCG or Adelaide Oval, but, you know, when you first, you know, all come together, the coach has already spoken to you, you come together and you go up the go up the race and uh, you run out and you, you see the banner and you read what's on it. It's kind of one of the great moments that, uh, you know, you cherish football about i've always said that there shouldn't be cameras inside uh change rooms only because i reckon if you've made it to that level it should be that inner sanctum that only you get to experience and those only few if it's your your daughters Mm. your sons your family um you know the privileged ones just to see what it's like but as you run out onto an oval and you see the banner so thanks very much we we do love the banners and uh, i always used to run out second last and choco williams Mark Williams, who used to shoot stuff behind the goals, he's yeah, always yeah, run yep. out last. So number twenty-two. <laughs> yeah, he was. So, so Spider, um, you, you've had a very, very colourful career. I mean, you you spent most of your time at St Kilda, um, and you got to play in a grand final there. Um, and you guys were going quite strong then, but then all of a sudden, uh, you, you ended up at the Hawks not long after that uh, grand final appearance. Yeah, Is that- look, unfortunately. Yeah, oh, well, I broke my collarbone in 97, so I missed out on the 97 grand final. And then, um, you know, oh, look, times at St Kilda, we, yeah, I think the 90s had, had some really good uh, times and you you really enjoyed it. Uh, at the same time, Grant Thomas then was the coach of the St Kilda Footy Club, which I didn't see, you know, eye to eye. We had different uh, ideas on things. And, and plus, you know, to be honest, there was probably a perception out there that, you um, you know, I felt it was definitely wrong about myself. Uh, you know, I actually cared about footy. I actually trained, trained quite hard, you know, to get myself right and get myself up each and every week. So, 
Yeah, I uh, decided that uh, you know after ten years that uh, you know, I'd look for a trade and see what I can do. And I actually sat down with Collingwood and uh, went through all the procedures uh, with Mick Mo- uh, with um, uh, what's his name Matthews. No, no, we can't uh, in a minute. Sure, their te- no, their team manager at the. Uh, oh, yeah. And he ended up going to the storm. Anyway, um, so anyway, had a, had a chat to Collingwood. They ended up getting Fra- Josh Fraser and uh, ended up doing the deal. Cut, went to Hawthorne, which, uh, you know, the family club and tried to, you know, show people that, uh, you know, there was more to, you know, spider than what uh, other people thought <laughs> and try to, try to, yeah, just try and play a good couple of games of, couple of, games of footy. Well, what was it well, about it, Hawthorne that made you want to go there? Oh, look, yeah, the family club, you know, oh, I had a, you know, my daughter, by the time I, I went to Hawthorne, you know, my daughter, Caitlin, when I was 18, and, uh, you know, then I had Summer and an A, uh, you know, in the early, early 2000s, so, you know, you, when you're 25, 26, you know, you got uh, a couple of children from, you know, two different girls and, you know, the family club and just wanted to yeah. change that perception of what the what I was about, um, and, you know, Peter Swab at the time, yeah. uh, you know, it was fantastic, and, you know, Crawford coming back off of Brownlow, so, you know, they definitely had a side there with Johnny Hay and Mark Raymond and Nick Holland and these kind of fellas, so it was club at Joel Smith that I knew that had done me uh, earlier on at the Saints and, and come back and had a magnificent career at Hawthorne, so, yeah, that was that was kind of the, the idea behind it. Yeah, and well, you um, did have a pretty good uh, career at Hawthorne, uh, 2004 Peter Crimmins medalist. So that'd be up there in your career highlights, wouldn't it? Yeah, oh, look, I, I think, um, yeah, very fortunate enough to win two. One was a Trevor Barker award, yep. and, uh, you know, I was at St Kilda when Trevor passed away. So then to name the award after Trevor Barker and then winning it the first year, uh, having that, uh, you know, name next to a medal was always nice. And then, uh, you know, the Peter Cremins one as well. So, you know, we know exactly, you know, as Hawthorne fans, you know, the, the history behind Peter Cremins. So, you know, personally, I, I'm really proud. Yeah, we didn't have the greatest year, but, you know, as a person coming from another club, I think you always want to try and, you know, try and achieve the best you can. And, uh, you know, I was able to do that in 2004. But, but interesting, with that Peter Cremins medal, I've been... Everyone keeps ringing me and say, did you lose it that night? And I remember we're at the casino and, yes, we have a few big nights. And uh, <laughs> did I ever lose it? Now, I can tell you, no, I didn't. Somebody's actually replicated it. All right. So there's so, a big, yeah. big story to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's an actual replication of some of the medals out there because I've always had mine and I'm thinking, hang on, because all my stuff's down in New Zealand. When I retired, I moved to New Zealand. And, uh, and then I'm going... Well, hang on, how I can't, and then my sister's ringing me, and then my other sister ringing me, and they got two different ones. I'm going, hang on, this can't be real. So, I'll wow, be careful out there because there's some dodgy ones out there. That's incredible! Wow, yeah, that's yeah. that's interesting. So, mate, um, I just want to shoot to some of the viewers. We've got a lot of questions coming through for you. Um, yep. so let's see, we've got um, here we sorry, I had some lined up. So, Sar Cage wants to know, when did you lose the locks? Oh, gee, they're a long way gone now, aren't they? <laughs> 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 well, you nearly start growing in here. Oh, look, I think, um, you know, when do, you know what, actually, because they weren't real. I don't want to disappoint everyone, but they were fake. And it was like No way. Hair. Yeah. What? And I had, to, I had to sit in the barbershop for like four hours and <laughs> get those done. And then they started, when I dyed them from, you know, brown or whatever it is to blonde, they started snapping off and breaking. So oh. then, uh, then they ended up about, they started off about that long and then they yep. ended up about, you know, that long. And then it was like, <laughs> okay, it's time to cut them the off and up. start again. Yeah, oh. <laughs> the, fun, the fun's gone. Oh, wow. Awesome. Few of them. Uh, good. Oh, I had no idea, mate. So there you go. You've learned something um, here today on Talking yeah. Hawks, in case you didn't know. Now, Brad Gunn, he's a good follower of the show. Um, he said, Spider, I've been meaning to ask you for years, what did Tim Watson say to you when you gave away that 100-metre oh. penalty against Hawthorne back in 99? He must have been filthy yeah. with you. Yeah, I was filthy against Shane Crawford. Always come back to haunt us too. You know what happened? So the odd, yeah, I was playing at St Kilda at the time. 
playing against Hawthorne, well, a few goals up. It was actually the big, one of the biggest comebacks in um, history, uh, maybe four, maybe six, somewhere in the top ten anyway. And I gave Shane Crawford a 50, gave the umpire a little bit of feedback, which he didn't accept, So, which <laughs> gave Crawford another 50, kicked the goal. And from that game, we did not win a th- third quarter for about one and a, no, just over one year. Wow. Just, yeah, mentally, you know, and it's really hard. And a lot of people talk about football being played above the shoulders. And yep. for, for some for some time, you know, we were up at quarter time, up at half time. At, after half time, we just absolutely plummet ever since that 100 metres. Why? I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, Tim wasn't uh, overly happy. And uh, every time now I see someone give away 100 metres, I'm just like, I'm just going to watch the next couple of weeks to see if it happens to them or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew Everett wants yeah. to know, um, are you doing any ruck coaching for the Suns? Um, I think I'd like to. Interesting at the moment, and uh, I get along with Jared Witch really well, and, uh, you know, Zach Smith's come back, and Tommy Nichols, who was there. And, like, the hardest thing for the last couple of years is they've had Matthew Primus. So Matthew Primus, who was a premium ruckman against myself, uh, you know, through the through the nineties and the early two thousands, he's always been the assistant coach. So I, I've never really thought they'd needed that role. And then um, this year, late last year, he left. You know, we speak to Stewie Jew once or twice a week on the radio, and uh, I always was thinking about going down there. But unfortunately, now with COVID and how everything's done and the bubbles and how they run up here. Absolutely no hope of getting into the inner sanctum of a of a footy club. But I'd like to. I'd like to. I think um, you know Jeff White lives up here as well, so I see Jeff White a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I think there's yeah. Hopefully one day so, I'd like to get involved in it again. So there's scope for you to get into back into the game and through coaching. I would say only just just that ruck work. I wouldn't go back into the hardcore coaching. You know the. The maths and the science behind watching so much digital content these days and, and looking at the science behind everything probably really wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah, get yeah. out there on the oval and have a kick and, and show people how to rock and, and the ideas behind it and some of the tricks in the trade to, to make it happen. Yeah, more than happy to do that. But, yeah, anything about, beyond that, outside of maybe – yeah, being the, the face of their chairman's land, so I can go there every Saturday <laughs> or Sunday wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> now, Spider, you, you've um, Stephen Camilleri's got a question here, and, and it's something I wouldn't mind touching on a bit more. Um, he says, "What were your feelings when the Hawks won the in 08, uh, being you could have been part of it?" Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, you, you kind of look at all those, and um, you know, you, you think what what could have been, and yeah, it could have been. Um, you know, when Alistair Clarkson come in, we know that uh, you know he got a, rid of a lot of uh, older guys. I wanted two years, he wanted one. Yeah, I could I could have absolutely uh, you know knuckled down and said this is what I'm I'm going to do. Um, at the same time, Sydney were playing in grand finals at the end of '05. Uh, when Sydney mm. won the grand final, I was supposed to go. To, well, wasn't supposed to, but it, uh, you know, tried to get the trade to go to Sydney, knowing yep. that you know how they do and what they do. Um, you know, uh, Jason Ball was going to retire, so I was going to end up in Sydney in, in, at the end of '05, early '06. They played the grand final in '06, but Hawthorne didn't do the trade, so I also missed out on that one as well. And so mm-hmm. you kind of, you know. People got to understand that you know, really, your hands and your feet are your, you know, your, your corner shop, and this is what you, you work for. It's an industry, and um, yeah, it was tough to watch because yeah, you always thought if I went down that right path, uh, you know, things could have could have been different. But at the same time, I'd known what you know, kind of quality side Alistair Clarkson built from the day he walked in, and and what he wanted to achieve. So um, look, the Hawks, you know, I yeah, I just. Does it affect me now? Not really. I went to Labrador yeah. up here, played there for a year. We lost a grand final there. So ever I went, <laughs> as soon as I left, they went went on to win triple grand, grand finals up here. So if, if you leave your mark, one, mate. I just set them up and then I leave and then they go on to win grand finals. Oh, it's not about me, it's about them. <laughs> oh, Spider, you, you must be the most unluckiest um, player. I mean, a guy with your skill, with all your strains you got and the, the best and fairest and 
um, that just so painfully close to to getting a premiership with um, all three of the clubs that you played with. Really, I mean, the Saints. If you had not broken your collarbone, what could have happened? If you hung around yeah. another year or two with the Hawks, you know, and then Sydney, it was a bit early, and it's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you, when you when you look at it like that, and we know, you know, you look like uh, you know Martin Pike, who who goes to three clubs and plays in four five yeah. premierships, and uh, yeah. that's just how it works. You know, you look yeah. at um, uh, what's Clark Keating at Brisbane Lions. You know, he didn't play all through the year and just come come in September and playing three or two two or three grand finals. But you know, on the other side side of things and as as um Hawthorne fans, you know, there's a couple of players down there, same position. His, his name just left me for two seconds, but I had it a minute ago, was you know, he did three knee recos and played Bailey. what's that? Yeah. Max Bailey. Bailey. Max Bailey. Yeah. So, you know, you sit there and go, you know, I was fortunate enough to play sixteen years, play two hundred and ninety odd games, play all Australian, play in, you know, um, you know, Victoria versus South Australia. Um, yeah. And then Max Bailey, you see somebody who's just as talented, um, just as dedicated, great fella, and unfortunately, you know, has a few knee reconstructions. So, you, you know, yep, yeah, awesome, but at the same time, you got to weigh it up and go, that's that's football. Yeah. 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 No, How it's, it's a are, tough industry. You were there for the start of Clarko. What was your opinion of him in the early days? And, and could you see... Obviously, you said he built something pretty special, but could you see that back then or not? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember we <laughs> we we had a, uh, a get together on a uh, it might have been a Sunday or a Saturday or a Sunday, and all the Hawks boys were getting together. So we run Clarko and uh, you know said, oh, look, "Would you like to you know come around meet a few of the boys before we start on Monday?" So it might have been. Friday, so I don't think we would have done it on a Sunday. But anyway, I said, do you want to meet a couple of boys? And, uh, you know, we're just having a barbie and a few beers before you start on Monday. And uh, he said, no, no, no. He goes, I'll start on Monday. And he goes, I'll hit them between the eyes and they'll go, they'll know exactly what I'm here for and how we're going to do it. Yep. Yep. And he was right. Yeah. Absolutely correct. So, you know, you, you definitely can't take that away from him. He's uh, been able to do a remarkable job and, you know, even the – even the guys uh, around him, you know, they're, they're really sought after now around the AFL. A few of them have jumped shit and gone to other clubs and you see it and that's that's the reason why. And I always remember too, remember Benny McGlynn uh, mm. come out of the Clarko system, got drafted yep. to Sydney and I was yep. in Sydney at the time. And Benny McGlynn actually run, like taught these blokes how to run. Yet yeah. he coming off a side that had realistically played – in a lot of finals, um, you know, Sydney didn't get miss many finals in that ten-year period. Mm. Yet Benny McGlynn come up and uh, showed him, you know, not not how to, yeah, you know, just just the the amount of running that that it takes, and uh, you know, that's what Clarko was able to bring. He's a, an absolute new, um, you know, formula to football, and uh, we all know the story yeah. behind Kakoda as well. The first year when you know Clarko was on board, we all went there. So yeah, it's and. Yeah, there's some great memories there. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Now, um, Dylan Reese, uh, man, wants to know, um, Spider, be honest, which club do you call home? Oh, Good question, yeah, Dylan. Look, the answer to that. Yeah, it is. Great question. And, and look, and it's hard to always talk about because I think the whole three different clubs, and, uh, you know, I was talking to Chris and Brad earlier about, you know, between myself and my brother, uh, you know, we've covered off nearly every club in the AFL. <laughs> yeah, he, he's been in the Bulldogs and Carlton and Sydney as well. But, uh, you know, yeah, for me, you know, I, I love the 90s. The 90s was, I, I still reckon, the best footy. Uh, it was just good, fun footy. Uh, you know, Hawthorne, things started to get real. You know, yeah. blokes started to, you know, be full-time and, and uh, dedicate you know, every day of the week and, to football and that was it. That was their job. This is this is getting real. And then when you go to Sydney, you get to see outside of what we call you know the, the Victorian bubble and see what football is really like. Um, mm. You know the other side of the Murray, and it's a whole different kettle of fish. So yeah. you know, for me, I, I was I, I, you know, didn't play in premierships, but fortunate enough to see three great clubs. But I'd probably call my home St Kilda. You know where yeah. I started, got drafted, played ten years. My son, Boston, now, um, you know, in the father and son academy there. So, hopefully, oh, fantastic. Yeah, hopefully he can get an opportunity to go on and, uh, you know, represent the name. And, you know, I, 
yeah, personally, I think that's one of the greatest things the AFL's done. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we play in a sport where we watch a lot of other sports here on the Gold Coast. But, you know, that father-son rule and seeing, you know, your Silvanis and your Kennedys and your yeah. Blitz and these people running around in the same jumpers as their grandparents or their, or their fathers is just yeah. uh, fantastic. Yeah, completely agree. Just, and it's that. such a shame that you didn't make the 100 games for Hawks. So we're yeah. pretty disappointed yeah. about that, mate. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was always hard. Maybe... Like the question before, if I played out in the 08 grand final, <laughs> then I yeah, I want. <laughs> I think your son would have picked the Hawks um, if that yeah, had been yeah. the case. So, but so you touching never on know. that, one of um, one of the articles I read was, um, yeah, you did come into the system and went through a few stages, uh, and said at the end, if you'd started your career as full on as it is now, you wouldn't have survived with the training schedules and all the rest of it. Yeah, it's interesting. I think most people, it's like I remember Plugger ringing up SEN only a couple of uh, years ago. I oh, know, only last year when they said oh, Plugger wouldn't get a kick these days. Well, yeah. I, you know, I, I reckon it doesn't matter what kind of player you are. If you can find the footy and you can operate, you, you're good enough to be able to do it in any area. If it was 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you're adapted. You would have you would have come through a whole different system. So, yeah, yeah look, I. It, I find it a different game, but then we wouldn't have known the other side either. Because so, I did read that you were definitely pretty lazy on the training track, Spide. Yeah, but see, saying that, at the same time, I'd get up at 6 o'clock every morning and swim with the directors of the football club. Yep. So okay. yeah. I'd, train, I'd train every morning at 5.30, 6 o'clock. And, uh, yeah, get you wake out of the way. Yeah, so yeah, I probably did myself no favors at certain times by by looking that that kind of that that image. But uh, you know, away from the football club, um, yeah, I I was never late, always on time. Last yeah, first one there, last to leave, all that. But you know, that was. I was and I, I, and I, I heard you. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't express that enough to the persona that you kind of had out there. You know, you got dreadlocks, you got tattoos. People sit there and go, oh, yeah. you know, well, he's not really serious about football yet. You know, I'd get up at 6 o'clock every morning, swim and train. But that was just how I did it. Yeah. And I, and I heard you don't like when your um, radio colleagues turn up five minutes late for a 3 o'clock or a 4 o'clock morning <laughs> meeting. See, this is what – and if anybody listening out there, this is what gets me. And this is why a lot of people actually employ sports people is that a 3 o'clock meeting means we're ready to go at 3 o'clock. Doesn't mean yeah. whilst in at three o'clock, then go and get your coffee and then worry about this, this, and this, and this. We're talking about three o'clock. We're starting ready to go. at three o'clock. You're ready to go. And yeah, I, I'm a big, yeah. And to, to, towards the end of, uh, you know, my career, especially at Sydney, it cost, you know, some very good players spots in the team because they were always running late to training, always wanted to leave early, uh, late to this, late to that. And Sydney didn't put up with it and it cost a few players quite a few games. Yeah. Now, Spider, um, Dan Riff is asking, uh, who, who's who been your hardest coach? Oh, look, hardest coach, uh, I think all of them are a little bit different. Probably Stan Elves. Yeah, he's probably our best coach. Um, I thought Stan was a, you know, he's a hard coach. He, he started bringing in all these... Uh, you know, professionalisms and, uh, you know, we'll be all on the, in the bar at Lowy's Bar called Flaming Moe's in uh, Brighton all there after a game and Stan will be outside doing inside 50s and all these stats where that wasn't heard of. In those. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, we'll be all out. But, yeah, Stan, who, who really rode us uh, pretty hard and then, um, you know, as in workload and work rate was probably, probably Clarko. Yeah, yeah, but uh, as in, like, someone who rode you and tried to keep going and keep going was probably Stan Ellis. He's the most demanding, was he? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. For that time where we weren't yeah. really used to it, you know, we're coming off a Tuesday, Thursday training session and, a, you know, a Saturday game to pretty much training every day and, you know, this is how it's going to ha- operate and this is what you're going to do. Fantastic. Who was your Sydney coach? What's that? Who was your Sydney coach? Uh, I was like, oh, yeah, Paul Roos. So I was on the Roos. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Swabby and uh, I end up having... My impression of Roosie is that he would have been pretty ruthless, pretty hard, but... See, Roosie was... Gabe, cut you some slack, maybe. He, he, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> he was he was fair and he was honest, but he, he was very... Um, 
he was very down to earth, very people person. He'll put you into his office. He wouldn't know if you, you know, if you he's talking about the game and he wants you to improve here, or you know, he's talking about the family and making sure everyone's happy. But you know, there there was times there that it was very very ruthless. But you got to remember too, this is when all those real big honesty sessions started to come into play. You know, mm. the honesty sessions of, um, you know... Uh, leading teams. Leading teams at the yep. time. And um, Justin Peckett and these bikes still work for him because, you know, it really started at the St Kilda Footy Club Understand and a couple of others. And, you know, they were... And they still are now. They go through every sport. They are ruthless when you start looking at yourself and trying to, you know, appraise yourself against, you know, everybody else in the team. So, you know, we've had a couple of honesty sessions and... Yeah, you know, my first one at St Kilda, I was voted number, what number fifty out of number out of fifty two as the uh, most professional. So, and I was playing senior footy, so I was right down the bottom. And you know, they're a very, very good wake up call. So, probably need yeah. a coach aren't harder. Sometimes these these um, honesty sessions are very, very tough to take. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. particularly yeah. if you're not used to getting feedback like that as well. Oh, so, we've had oh. yeah, yeah, and and. It's honest feedback, and you know, you, even though you've got your mates because we're in groups, you can't hide. So mm. absolutely honest feedback and direct feedback. So a lot of businesses couldn't do it. It'd be really hard yeah. to do it in radio, and they said they wouldn't do it. They couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, Spider, Dylan wants to know, what were your proudest moment? What was your proudest moment and your biggest regret? Oh, I think um, you know most people's first games are your proudest moment. You work you work hard and you know, played Geelong down at Cadinia Park and um, you know it was just just getting there. Uh, I didn't mm. have a lot of uh, growing up in in Teal Cup or you know in um, representative squads. So I think being able to go from the under 19s and secure at those days to stay on the list at the uh, you know, the uh, seconds and then get a game against Geelong, first game in 93, always probably one of those moments. And representing Victoria and playing in, you know, playing for Australia, even though I went all the way to Ireland for 10 days and played one <laughs> minute, that was all right. Yeah. Well, you know, it was, it was, it was definitely worth the AFL sending me there, don't worry. Yeah, no thanks for that I'm junket, boys. Enjoying myself, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and probably, you know, my hardest moment was, um, you know, the Scotty Chisholm incident, you know, when I got yeah. done for racial vilification, um, yeah, that was it was hard. You know, the four weeks of twenty thousand uh, dollars, but you know, when you've got daughters at school and uh, you know, family and friends, yeah. and all all them that uh, you know, obviously get a bit of flack off the back of you know you not really realizing what to say, um, so. That was a really tough time with the media camping outside my house and, you know, myself having to go through the neighbour's house just to get inside. Um, so that was probably the the toughest time. And, you know, you're getting sent a letter in the mail and, uh, you know, normally I rip all my envelopes at the end. But if I yeah. opened it, like most people, you know, put your finger in and, yeah. you know, there's razor blades, uh, you know, sticking Jesus. tape to the top of a piece of cardboard. Um, you you know, all those things are... Are really really hard but at the same time it was an experience that uh, you know i went and got some education and now you know been able to travel around australia and and go into some of these communities where some people have never been to hearts bluff three hours west of alice springs unbelievable yeah. went there and you know did a did a clinic out there with the kids and you know they made us a cake and took my daughters and all through Kakadu and you know the Northern Territory and Kimberleys going into some of the remote communities there. Now with my show has um, it's been a highlight. I probably wouldn't have gone to that extent and been able to learn so much about it if that had ha hadn't happened. So um, that was my biggest regret. But at the same time, I think I've been able to change that and turn that into a positive and and give back into some of these great communities. Absolutely, yeah, that, I, and yeah, particularly in that, light of the. Indigenous round coming up as well. I mean, it's um. Sorry, are you there? You there? Yeah. We got, we got you, you, Spider. We still got you. Oh no! <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, we got oh. you. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Cool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, um. It's in, at the moment, isn't it? And especially in light of in uh, Indigenous round. 
Yeah, the NRL. Sorry. Even that happened recently in the NRL, didn't it? With a bit of racial vilification. So it's just it's something we want to get out of the game. Yeah, I think so. Uh, oh, definitely. Um, you know, the NRL and, uh, you know, you see it in all the different games and, you know, you saw the Adam Goods uh, yeah. doco come out. So, well, there's so many examples, but um, I think if people actually take a little bit bit of time and, you know, you don't want to, you know, it's, it's a, an opportunity for, for school, you know. You know, we're learning about something, some history in, you know, I, I had to read the diary of Anne Frank. Now, what's that going to do for me rather than reading something that's relevant to the country we live in? So I think there's yeah. some really good chances for, for schools to really buy into and say, you know, this is, this is uh, you know, some of the history and, you know, you can't change history, but you can actually improve the future. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's all done in the heat of the moment and it, it's just part of footy and any sport really, trash talk and and you're trying to get inside your opponent's head and that that's, yeah, it's part of the game and it's, unfortunately you know, sometimes you say the wrong thing. Yeah, it is, and that, that is tough and, you know, I had mates in my car and we're driving and I, I told them and, you know, when you realise, you know, exactly what it means and... and, and you know, and now being able to, you know, see how proud, you know, some of the, you know, the Indigenous players are with Indigenous round and the, and the jumpers. And, and, yeah, it is in the heat of the moment, but at the same time, you've got to realise and be able to choose your words. And, uh, you know, my words were wrong that day. Um, and, you know, we grew up with, you know, Wimmer and Gilbert McAdam and, and these blokes, uh, you know, calling the same kind of names. But, you know, society's changed a lot now. So, you know, you, you think about half the jokes that a lot of people used to do that we don't we don't accept. So, yeah, yeah. Look, I think we've we've come a long way, and I'm sure that uh, we'll come a lot further as well. So, it's great to what what all codes are doing, and uh, mm. I absolutely embrace them for doing it. It's a, it's a big it's a great divide message. moment between uh, Harry O'Brien and Collingwood too. But yeah, let's yeah, hope they can yeah. get the bottom of it. Well, I think right. I, I think they will, and uh, you know I don't know the ins and outs, but uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, and uh, you don't want to see that. And uh, you know nowadays, and you know you, you listen to a Kevin. I don't know if anyone's you know listened to Kevin Sheedy talk before when he talks about the Indigenous players, and um, he spoke about those. And there's a little community just out of WA, out of Perth, down that bottom Esperance or maybe Albany area, and they have something like seventy of our great players coming out of that one community, mm, which yeah. is just remarkable. It's incredible. Yeah. It, look, Spider, that's a, it's a great story, and I think um, it's an important one, particularly in light of Indigenous round, um, that that's something that we uh, reflect on. We have come a long way as a society, but certainly um, I think that there's a lot of people out there that would like to still go back and beat up on people that have made those mistakes in the past instead of giving them space to grow as a human being, which you've clearly done in that period of time. So full credit to you. And I think it's, uh, I think it's a wonderful story. And um, particularly now with your interactions with um, the show, with, uh, um, with uh, Indigenous folks um, and how much you've been contributing to that. I, I think it's a great story. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of being able to do it. And I even went and met Scotty Chisholm's mum and uh, sister when I first travelled up north. So um, wow. just being able to sit next to them and watch a little bit of footy and uh, have a chat to them was, uh, you know, a great part, a great, uh, you yeah, know, something that, um, you know, I haven't really ever told anyone that we did, but, uh, yeah, it was fantastic to be able to do it. Oh, thanks yeah. for sharing. That's great. Awesome. Now, um, Spider, Fish Camilleri wants to know uh, – sorry, Stephen Camilleri wants to know um, – it's it's pretty long there, but what what is the best story from your Glen Ferry days? Oh, yeah. You know, to be honest, I've I've got about three percent here, but I can go to my phone. But my best story at Glen Ferry was the fact that look, Glen Ferry was. I remember they had the TAB upstairs, and Croft wanted to buy his own little machine up there. That uh, and he backed a <laughs> hundred dollar winner one day. I can remember that. Uh, right before training too. Gee, didn't he train well that night? <laughs> I love it. Uh, which, was, which was great. I uh, looked at the gym, the sauna in the uh, the Hawks room because, uh, you know, when we had the sauna there, you had to – everyone jump. But, look, for me, I remember the Hawthorne Footy Club with Make-A-Wish Foundation invited down Ben who had, uh, you know, a lot of early issues – 
Uh, he was bound to a wheelchair, and all he ever wanted to do was meet the Hawthorne Football Club. And um, mm. I still remember the night when Peter Swab told him to come down. He was sitting in his chair in the middle of the room, and all the boys were signing his jumper. And uh, Swabby said, look, you're coaching tonight. And he went out there in the middle of Glen Ferry Oval. The lights were on. It was a cold winter's night, but he didn't care. His mum and dad with a massive smile on their face from ear to ear. Picked him up in a limo, and he sat in the middle of the ground, and uh, he coached us for the night and you know we're doing a handball drill or around the ground drill and he'd blow the whistle and he'd go come in boys come in what's up ben he goes no no good you won't win doing that you won't win doing that so we all run back out but um you know just that that community they had um if it wasn't there if it was in tasmania at launceston going into the children's ward of um, you know the hospitals, um, that's that's my memory of the Hawthorne Football Club. And you know when you when you go into games in if it was in Adelaide and seeing great players of Johnny Platten or you know turning up to training and seeing Dermot Burton or Jason Dunstall or you know going somewhere and you know another another you know game somewhere else and there's Peter Knights or Peter Hudson and I think you know the Hawthorne Football Club have been able to and you know. Success has got something to do with it, but being able mm. to have all those you know, players come through and and really feel that vibe of uh, success and, and you know just pass it down. And now you know the players of recent years have been will be able to do that to the next generation with uh, you know the triple peak and also O eight. Yeah, fantastic. Now, Spider, um, we have a segment that we do on the show. We call it um, the uh, what do we call it, Chris? Shot clock, mate. The shot, shot clock. clock. Yeah. The shot clock. <laughs> yep. Wake up, Brad. The shot clock. So Chris is going to uh, – Matt's not here tonight, so Chris is going to run you through the shot clock. Over to you, Chris. Right. So we're just going to run you through a few questions here. Just try and keep it uh, sharp and short. And, uh, yeah, go. let's go. Um, so a game is in the balance at the centre bounce, and who are you tapping the ball to from your playing days? Oh, uh, From me? Out of any club? Any club you want. Robert Harvey. Robert Harvey. Perfect answer. Uh, so the hard ball, which goes to about six o'clock, and he'll go, he'll get just swoop around the outside. So beautiful. Yeah, that's what to. Okay, who was your toughest opponent? Probably in the ruck, I'm guessing, rather than your uh, yeah, forward. Matty, Prom- Matty Promise. Promise. Yep. yep. Way too strong for me. Okay, most skillful and hardest player you played with at St Kilda and Hawthorne, or oh, and oh. Sydney if you want to throw one in there. Yeah, to be honest, you know, the one that uh, I reckon uh, Craig Bolt was the most underrated player I played with. Uh, yep. The, the, oh, the most skillful, probably Nicky Wimmer. Yep, good answer. Anyone from Hawthorne you want to throw in there? Uh, with Hawthorne, <laughs> we're, Dutch, we we're a Hawks show, uh, mate. Come on. Frank uh, Crow, because all he had to do was run as far as he can, kick it as far as he can, run back, get the ball, run as far as he can, kick it as far as he can. So I love Crow. <laughs> We'll pass that message on when we get him on the show. Um, who had the biggest impact on your playing career, whether it be a player, a mentor, or a coach? Uh, yeah, I think uh, we called him Robocop. He was a, uh, a fitness guy at St Kilda, and uh, he's the one that uh, learned or taught me how to train properly. Beautiful. What did you? Uh, what did Clarko do to get the best out of you? Oh, I think Clarko, well... I think just his structures, the way he set up the team, just his, his fitness levels were beyond anything we'd experienced before. So, you know, we were we were all fit, fit as we've been. Yeah. Uh, the best current young ruckman in the league? Look, I was watching Maxi Gorn versus, uh, what's it, uh, Grundy the other day, and I, I still reckon Wicks has uh, got to be up there, but uh, for me, I'd go still Grundy. Yep. Oh, um, thoughts on McAvoy and Segler as Ruckman at Hawthorne? Yeah, it's always tough. I think uh, McAvoy for sure. He can uh, he can play his role, but uh, you know these days you you do need a good quality Ruckman that uh, is very consistent. McAvoy, yeah, he does that job. But then uh, you know, when you look at Gorn and these blokes who are kicking goals and being able to you know run out full games, um, yeah, I'm biased, but Ruckman are worth their weight in gold. You got to keep keep hold of them. That's it, mate. Stick with the team. Um, okay, finish off with the two-part question. What is the favourite place you visited? And second, your number one destination that you haven't been to? 
Oh, look, to me, anybody who's travelling out there, your number one destination has to be the Australian Outback. Wherever you hit that red dust, it yeah. is magnificent. The Outback pubs, the people you meet, uh, get right out there. You can travel for three hours and see nothing on a dusty road and run into a pub and meet the people. So it's got to be the red dust. And uh, one place I've never been to that I want to do, it's actually a trip, and it's from Winton in uh, Queensland, diagonally across Australia down to Kalgoorlie. It's called uh, the Australia's Longest Shortcut. So <laughs> that's my ultimate trip. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, that wraps uh, that's... up the segment. Thanks for those answers. That was great. Awesome, Spider. So, um, Spider, let's talk about um, the current team. Now, do you keep up with the footy these days and the Hawks? Well, I do a little bit. If this runs out, I'll load this straight up onto my phone. Hopefully, you can yep. log straight back in. Um, yeah, I, look, I, I do follow. I follow a little bit mainly now, you know, being uh, on the Gold Coast, you follow a lot about the Gold Coast Suns uh, each yep. and every week. Uh, always have an interest in uh, you know teams, so yeah, follow a little bit about the the Hawks and. Um, Where do you think yeah, we're sitting at the up. moment? What are you going to follow everyone? Well, we've lost him. <laughs> <laughs> His phone <laughs> ran out. <laughs> um, we oh. were, I was looking at the poll earlier, which I'll have to uh, try and bring up. I should have had that up on the screen. Um, we asked about the poll and where you think Hawthorne stands. So let's see what Spider thinks about that when he gets back on. Yeah, be keen to know. So, um, Chris, uh, we've had some bad news uh, and we've got some good news um, with the Hawks too. So, unfortunately, Jag has broken his hand uh, and he's out for probably I'm out for the that. next next six weeks. So, it's probably your season for him. Uh, yeah. So, that's pretty disappointing, mate. It is because um, he leads from the front and, um, yeah, he's in some pretty good form. So, yeah, he'll be sadly missed. But Sicily's done his ACL. Oh, shattered. It's not even like just this season. It's just his whole career. So, the, amount of times, um, the amount of times people repeat that injury, I just really hope he can recover and not do it again. Oh, me too. I was absolutely shattered for him um, and really disappointed. So, um, yeah, it's such a shame. So, But look, it looks like we got Spider back on. So uh, here we go. We got you back, Spider. And in, in light of that, those two bad news about those there injuries, we go. We've, we've got Will Day just signed a new contract. So happy days for us. Happy days. Yeah, so <laughs> some mixed news for us. At the moment. It, so, Spider, what are your thoughts on the current um, team at the moment and where we're at? Look, the thing I've got, I've always said with uh, Alice Clarkson, if uh, you know, he can continue on, he'll uh, go down to down as the greatest coach of all time is the fact that, when you play Hawthorne, there's no guarantees. You'd absolutely give you, you know, every chance of uh, giving every side a run. So that's what I love about watching Hawthorne is, you know, you, you look at Geelong and they're exactly the same. They, they they give you a run no matter where they are on the ladder. They are quality. They, they're they very consistent. They're uh, methodical the way they operate. So, yeah, look, that's just – that that's how they operate. That's how they run. So – Look, yeah, they, they could do with a couple of other players. you got to think of, you know, when you're losing some of the great names that they've lost over the five or six years, it's going to take a little bit of time to get to. And, you know, there's a lot of those players who are number one draft picks. And, you know, at the moment, the Gold Coast Suns are getting all of them. So they're not open yeah. to anyone else. But, yeah, it's, a, it's tough for them. But at the same time, I think um, they're not easy beats. And they never will be, which is one yeah. of the great – Stigmas you want to always have. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, Lockie Barker wants to know, who do you reckon uh, has the brightest future from the Hawks? Oh, look, for me, you know, you kind of – and, you know, unfortunately he did his knee on the on the weekend. Uh, Sis. You know, with, yeah. When you look at something like that, at, that absolutely hurts. And we know that, uh, you know, players have come back and – you know, I spoke about Joel Smith a little bit earlier who, who had a really bad knee and come back and played some wonderful footy. So, you know, somebody like that who is always going to be, you know, kind of a skipper or a, you have, you have that captain's and leadership material mm. and lead a footy club for, for 10 years and, you know, you build, build other players around him. So that's a huge loss and, you know, a couple of other injuries as well. But uh, Sis, for me, was going to be probably the, the one that I would have said would have really helped, you know, bring bring this side, you know, into the next 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, that's um, it, it. It is a shame. It just it leaves a lot of things in limbo, doesn't it? I mean, a lot of people were touting um, Sicily to be the the future, uh, the captain for when um, Stratton steps down or is finished there. And uh, I, I can completely see that he would take on that role. It's either him or Jager O'Meara, in my opinion. Um, well, Campbell Brown said it would be Jager O'Meara. So, uh, and well, he's the, the thing prophet. is, Jager's always no. didn't. I think Jager come off the back of a knee as well. So. You know, yeah. you know, yeah, give it some really good advice. Um, you know, you've got uh, Tommy there as well, who, who, who's well. So, look, the the, the rehabilitation uh, system they've got there and uh, the rehab they've got has uh, proven beyond itself that, uh, you know, you can come back just as good so or even better. So that's, that's probably the one positive when you look at uh, Hawthorne. Yeah. Now, um, Barry Jolly's corrected me. He's saying that um, uh, Jago Abira will be back. Graham Wright said that he'll be back in three weeks. So that's um, that's not so bad. So fortunately, broken hand, no. just play screws. You know, pretty easy. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> so yeah. So, so, so quickly. So Spider, what do you, Spider? Let's what do you think our um, at, the answer is for us at the moment? Like, how do we how do we get out of this situation that we're in? Oh. Uh, I think there's another 14 clubs asking exactly the same question. It's our, how do we get out? But look, it's it's a, it's the same as every every club. I, I think you know every club that's uh, been really successful over the last you know, five, six, seven years. They've had a quality group of players that have stuck together for a long period of time, and um, mm. you know that's it's, it doesn't matter what code you play. I think. You know, those players who get used to playing each other. I coach the under-14s here at Southport Sharks. And still, you know, when you've got players coming back from the ones, dropped into the twos, they don't know how <coughs> each other plays. And I think it's that that long period. You've got to find that core 10, 12 players um, yeah. that can stick together for a long period of time. And then as soon as they're together for three or four years, like Kaiko did, was able then to get you... You, you know, your Burgoyne's or, or more so, yeah, you know, your Brian Lakes, your Stewie Jews, these blokes to come in, play their role for a year or two and then, yeah. uh, you know, move them on and out. But you just need that really strong, hardcore 10, 12 players. And, um, you know, I can look at the Gold Coast Suns and say that's what they're, you know, that's what they're building here. If they're able to sign those players, that's what they're doing. That's what Hawthorne need to do. And, um, look, I'm no rocket science, but uh, I'm tipping Clarko's trying to do that now. He knew exactly what he walked into when he got yeah. that with, you know, Franklin, Ruffhead, Lewis, Bateman, Hodge, Mitchell. Yeah, um, Rioli. You can go through them. Uh, you know, there's yeah. 12 core players that played outside of Franklin who left a year early but would have played 200 games, all of them together. Yeah. No, that's fantastic, Spider. Look, um, mate, it's been, we've gone a bit over time, but it's uh, uh, it's been wonderful having you on the show. And um, I, I like your theory about getting the 10 or 12 around them. Um, I might actually look at um, unpacking that a bit in a future show. So, uh, mate, it's like I said, yeah, it's been such a pleasure having you on here. And um, for, for any of you that are watching us here tonight, don't don't forget that we're also on Twitter, Instagram, um, YouTube, and Facebook. So and we've got the, um, the where you can find us down below there. Um, Spider, all the best for the future, mate. Hopefully you can get back on the road and do a few more shows there. Uh, if you're watching us and you're in um, Queensland, make sure you tune in to Spider and uh, on Triple M down there on the Goldie. Uh, and mate, don't enjoy yourself yeah. too much up there. So uh, you make us all jealous down here in Victoria. <laughs> so. Uh, mate, All pleasure having you on the show. If you're a Hawk supporter, make sure you sign up as a member because that's the only way you can really get tickets up here. So, you know, we're members of every footy club, so that means we get tickets to <laughs> every game. So, yeah, it's uh, it's the home of footy at the moment. It's great to uh, be a part of, uh, you know, great to have me on. I, I really appreciate uh, the call up and, yeah, you yeah, know, hopefully, uh, you know, Hawks, uh, you know, they're never going to totally bottom out because, you uh, We've all been there before, and uh, it's not a great place. Yeah, indeed. Thanks, Spider. And, uh, yeah, take care. See you, everyone. No worries. Thank anyway. you very much. Cheers. Thanks for the show. Right.